Plenty long. Well.
Good morning. And welcome to Salem Lutheran Church, those who are with us here live and those who are worshiping with us on live stream. It's good to have you all with us today. I uh, just have one announcement that I know of to make, and that is that uh, the bishop is going to be here September 12th. So the plan is for her to conduct the worship service, uh, preach the gospel, and also we're going to have afterwards a potluck reception for the bishop and for you to get to know her and her to get to know you. So mark your calendars, September 12th, get your potluck dishes out. Uh, if I'm here, I will, because uh, I don't know when my surgery will be, so if I'm here, I expect good food and smiling faces. That's it? That's the smiling faces you're going to show the bishop? Okay, that's better. Anyways, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rise. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess now our sin. God, our provider, help us. It is hard to believe there is enough to share. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for life in the world. Amen. Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy, you are forgiven, and loved into abundant life. Amen. We continue our worship with our gathering hymn, which is in the blue hymnal, 747, if you want to follow along the music. Otherwise, the song is, Christ is made the sure foundation. <laughs>
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God and for the unity of all let us pray to the Lord for this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise let us pray to the Lord save comfort and defend us gracious lord Amen. glory to god in the highest and peace to god's people on earth Let us pray. O oh God, eternal goodness, immeasurable love, you place your gifts before us. We eat and are satisfied. Fill us and this world in all its need with the life that comes only from you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our first reading this morning is from the book of Exodus, chapter 16, verses 2 through 4 and 9 through 15. The whole congregation of the Israelites complained against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. The Israelites said to them, If only we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the flesh pots and ate our fill of bread, for you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then the Lord said to Moses, I am going to rain bread from heaven for you, and each day the people shall go out and gather enough for that day. In that way, I will test them, whether they will follow my instruction or not. Then Moses said to Aaron, Say to the whole congregation of the Israelites, Draw near to the Lord, for he has heard your complaining. And as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the Israelites, they looked toward the wilderness, and the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. 
The Lord spoke to Moses and said, I have heard the complaining of the Israelites say to them, at twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall have your fill of bread. Then you shall know that I am the Lord your God. In the evening, quails came up and covered the camp, and in the morning there was a layer of dew around the camp. When the layer of dew lifted, there on the surface of the wilderness was a fine flaky substance as fine as frost on the ground. When the Israelites saw it, they said to one another, what it is? For they did not know what it was. And Moses said to them, it is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. The word of the Lord, thanks, thanks be to God. God. Our second reading is from Ephesians chapter 4, verses 1 through 16. I, therefore, the prisoner in the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to the one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. But each of us was given grace according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore it is said, when he ascended on high, he made captivity itself a captive. He gave gifts to his people. When it says he ascended, what does it mean but that he had also descended into the lower parts of the earth? He who descended is the same one who ascended far above all the heavens, so that he might fill all things. The gifts he gave were that some would be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ until all of us come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to maturity, to the measure of the full stature in Christ. We must no longer be children tossed to and fro and blown about by every wind of doctrine, by people's trickery, by their craftiness and deceitful scheming. But speaking the truth in love, we must grow up in every way into him who is the head into Christ, from whom the whole body, joined and knit together by every ligament with which it is equipped, as each part is working properly, promotes the body's growth in building itself up in love. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank mm -hmm. The Gospel of St. John in the sixth chapter. When the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were beside the sea, they themselves got into the boats and went to Capernaum looking for Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them, Very truly I tell you, you are looking for me not because you saw a sign, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For it is on him that God the Father has set his seal. Then they said to him, What must we do to perform the works of God? Jesus answered them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. So they said to him, What sign are you going to give us then, so that we may see it and believe you? What work are you performing? You know, our ancestors ate the man in the wilderness, 
As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. The Gospel of our Lord. Let us pray. O oh Lord God, our Heavenly Father, we come before you this day thanking you for your blessings, your mercy, for the day that you have given to us and for the opportunity to gather here with brothers and sisters in Christ and to worship your holy name. O oh Lord, now we ask that you open our hearts and minds to your word that we may hear and learn. As in his name we pray. Amen. You know, there was sort of one announcement I forgot to make. Uh, this is Luke's last Sunday with us. Uh, thank you for being with us for these Sundays and filling in for Joseph. We really appreciate it. Take our blessings and our best wishes with you. And who knows, maybe we'll see you again sometime. We'll see. We'll, see. <laughs> well, anyways, this morning I'd like to share one of my favorite stories with you. Uh, it's a story about a young man who woke up one morning, and Sunday morning, rolled over in bed, looked at his lovely wife, and told her that he was not going to church that morning. He then proceeded to tell her that he wasn't going because, one, he never got anything out of it. Number two, no one there really liked him or ever talked to him. And three, besides, he'd rather stay home and play in his garden or go out golfing. His wife listened very patiently to her husband and then turned to him and said, Honey, you need to go to church for three reasons. Number one, you'll feel better when you come home. Number two, they are your friends and they all love you dearly. And number three, but most important of all, you're the pastor and people will notice if you're not there. So the question comes down, I think it actually might have been a conversation Doris and I had at some point. <laughs> But anyways, the importance of this is why do we go to church? And I think that's what the gospel lesson is getting at. The question that the gospel lesson is asking us this morning is why do you go to church? You know, remember last week, if you were here, we talked about the feeding of the 5,000. And we talked about how John, and you notice that hopefully in the gospel lesson again, John never refers to those things as miracles. He always refers to them as signs. He did that so again in this gospel. He said, what sign are you looking for? Not miracle. What sign are you looking for? Because for John, the miracles were always signs. Glimpses into a new world. Glimpses into a world that Christ was inviting us to enter. Glimpses into a world, as we heard last week, where there was no hunger and there was no thirst. Glimpses into a world where there was no sickness and there was no death. No need for hospitals, no need for funeral homes. Only life. Glimpses into a world where there was only joy. Glimpses into a world into which Christ is inviting us. Now, did the people of Jesus, get, of Jesus Day get that? Absolutely not. That's the honest answer. For most of them, they never understood. They never understood. The only thing they saw in the signs was some miracle that satisfied their need in that moment. The day at, this, this story that we're listening to right now from John took place the day after, the day after the feeding of the 5,000. And people were running around looking for Jesus, following Jesus, trying to figure out where he was, where did he go? And finally, he turns to them and asks them the question, why are you following me? What are you looking for? Are you looking for signs? And they're following him because they realize that maybe he can satisfy their needs. They're not looking for the signs that point to a new world. They're not looking for the voice from God speaking to them. They're looking to have their belly satisfied for some bread and fish to satisfy their hunger. The honest answer is none of them really understood. None of them understood what Jesus was talking about or what he was saying. Why else can you explain how, how one moment they could welcome him into Jerusalem with the words, Hail, Hosanna to the Son of David, 
and the very next day say, crucify him, crucify him. They were looking for simple answers to simple problems, satisfy my need today and nothing beyond that. Now, before we get too critical, I, I, I've got to tell you, my heart really does go out to these people. I mean, they, they, they were really suffering in that time. They were a rather poor lot. They were people who eked out a living each day as best they could. They were people, by and large, who lived hand to mouth from day to day, not knowing if there'd be food tomorrow on their table for themselves, for their spouses, for their children. They were people who struggled every single day just to put food on the table. And now here, here was somebody who magically, magically provided them with what they needed for that day. Of course they'd follow him, wouldn't you? Wouldn't you if you were desperate and had a need and this guy could solve it, wouldn't you follow him? If you were hungry every day, trying to scrap out some food, wouldn't you follow him? But what Jesus is telling these people is that it's a shame is that that's all they're coming for. He is offering them so much more. He's offering them eternal life. He's offering them the presence and the peace that comes from knowing God. He is offering them happiness, eternal happiness with the Father. And they are settling for a few loaves of bread and a couple fish. I think that's what Jesus is saying when he says, I tell you, you are looking for me not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which is the Son of Man, and he will give it to you. So this morning I decided I'm going to give you some reasons why you should come to church. I don't know why you're here this morning, but hopefully it's one of these. Number one, to have fellowship, to have fellowship with the crucified and risen Christ. If you knew that Jesus was going to be in a particular place, would you be motivated to go? I wonder if we advertise out there in the public that next Sunday at uh, 10 o'clock, Jesus is going to be at Salem. I wonder if we have a few more people. You think? No? Yes? No reaction? Okay, I see a couple shaking their heads. All right. Maybe you might even come back next Sunday if Jesus was going to be here. Hey, well, Jesus is here. He is here every single Sunday. This is the place where we gather to come into the presence of our loving Lord and Savior. When we worship him, God is present. God is present here. And we are with him. That was number one. Number two, to be forgiven. You know, this is the amazing thing about our God. We were talking about this in our Bible study today. The big conflict between Peter and Paul in the New Testament was whether we we're saved by grace or whether we're saved by good works. And Paul was one who said, you are saved by grace through faith without the deeds of the law. We come here to be forgiven, to receive the love of God, to give, to be given the precious gift of the forgiveness of sins. He paid for that with his life. And when we come here, we are reminded each and every Sunday that we are God's forgiven children. We have been loved and we are forgiven. No matter what. No matter what. Number three, we come here to hear the voice of God. No, not my voice. The voice of God. God speaks to us here. God speaks to us here. Guiding us into his truth. Reminding us of what is right. Warning us about what is wrong. His is a voice of strength and comfort. A voice of healing. A voice of building up. His voice is one of sanity in the middle of a world that I think sometimes has gone just stark raving mad. His is a voice that tells the truth when so many other voices can't be trusted. His speaks to us in the midst of insanity. I was watching a show last night and, and uh, the guy was laying claim to the fact that we are living in a world today that is better, better than it's ever been before. And all I could think to myself was, oh my God, it must have been awful back then if this is the best we can do. If this is the best that we can be. And so I look for God to point me in the way of truth. 
I come here, number four, to be loved and to be encouraged. Coming to church means interacting with you fellow Christians. You know, I used to always tell the people at Zion that, you know, I may be the one to bring people to church, but I guarantee you, you're the ones that keep them. Because I've, I've long ago learned that people come not because I'm some great orator, which I'm not. And they don't come here because the music is so fantastic. They come here looking for a place to be loved and accepted. And if they don't find that here, I tell you, they will go elsewhere to find it. Why are you here? Are you here to be loved and accepted for who you are without any pretense? I think so. And that's what you look for. So why do we come to church? We come to be loved and accepted. We come here for people to lift us up when we are down. We come here for people to rejoice with us in the good times. We come here because of the love we find. Number five. We come here to love and encourage our fellow Christians. You know, at the heart of the Christian faith is the obligation to love one another as ourselves. You know, the one thing you hear so often in the New Testament is Jesus talking about love. By this shall all men know that you are my disciples and that you love one another. Love one another is a constant message that comes through from Jesus. It's not about miracles. It's not about healings. It's about the love we find and the love we should give. I remember Jesus saying one time, a new commandment I give to you, that you come to church every Sunday. No, that wasn't it. A new commandment I give to you, that you should give a tithe of everything you have to the church. No, that wasn't it. A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another, even as I have loved you, that you also love, therefore, one another. Paul echoes this when he says, bear one another's burdens and thereby fulfill the law of Christ. And so then, while we have the opportunity, let us do good to all people, and especially to those who are of the household of faith. Those are words of Paul. And what does that mean? It means when you come in this place, Love should be what you share. Love for one another. Looking for people who look down. If someone looks down today and is not talking, not the same person they were last Sunday, then go over and ask them. If you want to know what's wrong, ask. Something wrong? You okay? Even if there's nothing wrong, I think they'll appreciate you just asking. We come here to be loved and to find acceptance. So why do you come to church? Why are you here this morning? You come simply for five loaves of bread and two fish? Or do you come for more? You come for the signs, the signs from God. Why do you come to church? Amen. We continue our service now with the singing of our hymn of the day, which today is, Lord, you give the great commission. Let us rise to the glory of God.
Now, living together in trust and hope, let us confess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now rooted in Christ and sustained by the Spirit, we offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all of creation. Lord, listen to your children pray. Lord, send your spirit in this place. Lord, listen to your children praying. Send us love, send us power, send us grace. You call your church to be the body of Christ. Awaken all the baptized to the gifts you provide for carrying out the work of the ministry. Where the church is divided, knit us together and restore the unity of the faith. You command the clouds above and you cause the wind to blow into the heavens. Watch over deserts and wilderness places. Regenerate rainforests. Defend species at risk of extinction and strengthen the work of conservation organizations. You summon leaders to respond to the needs of your people. Instill those who govern with patience when confronted with grievances and perseverance in seeking what promises the well-being of the community. Hear us, O oh God. Lord, listen to your people and pray. Lord, send your spirit in this place. Lord, listen to your children pray. Send us love, send us power, send us grace. You draw near to those who cry out for help. Feed those who are hungry. Reassure those who are despairing and accompany those who are imprisoned. Rain down the true bread from heaven that gives life to the world. Console those who grieve and hear the cries of those who call to you for healing, especially Barbara and Monica, Lynn, Doug, Calvin, Levon, Patty, Marion, Jean, Tony, George, and Velda. You receive all who come seeking a sign of grace. Make this congregation a place of hospitality for those accustomed to rejection. 
To those who have felt excluded here or elsewhere, prepare us to welcome them in the name of Christ. You provide food that endures for eternal life. Sustain us each day with the bread of life until we are gathered with all the saints and feast together at your heavenly banquet. Hear us, O God. Lord, listen to your children praying. Lord, send your spirit in this place. Lord, listen to your children praying. Send us love, send us power, send us grace. We lift these and all our prayers to you, O God, confident in the promise of your saving love through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now the peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. And now let us greet one another. Remember the two-handed shuffle? Yep. There we go. Make sure you wave at everybody. Thank you for joining us this Sunday for our Sunday live stream service. This is the time that we will be passing the offering plate. I encourage you to make a contribution to Salem Lutheran Church either by check or by using our PayPal button that is found on our slcw.org website. Thank you in advance and I now return you to our service. pray. Jesus, bread of life, you have set this table with your very self and called us to the feast of plenty. Gather what has been sown among us and strengthen us in this meal. Make us to be what we receive here, your body for the life of the world. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right 
our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise praise to you almighty and merciful god through our savior jesus christ who on this day overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection open to us the way of everlasting life and so with all the choirs of angels with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven we praise your name and join their unending hymn beginning and the end, the giver of life. Blessed are you for the birth of creation. Blessed are you in the darkness and in the light. Blessed are you for your promise to your people. Blessed are you in the prophet's hopes and dreams. Blessed are you for Mary's openness to your will. Blessed are you for your son Jesus, the word made flesh. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us now proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And so with this bread and cup, we remember your word dwelling among us full of grace and truth. We remember our new birth in his death and resurrection, and we look with hope for his coming. Come, Lord Jesus. Holy God, we long for your spirit. Come among us. Bless this meal. May your word take flesh in us. Awaken your people. Fill us with your light. Bring the gift of peace on earth. Come, Holy Spirit. All praise and glory are yours, Holy One of Israel, Word of God incarnate, power of the Most High, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now the gifts of God for the people of God. Please be seated.
know I forgot something, didn't I? The Lord's Prayer. So let's do it now together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now take and eat, for this is the body of Christ. Take and drink, this is the blood of Christ. Now may this body and this blood strengthen and preserve you in true faith unto life everlasting. Amen. Let us rise and let us pray. Jesus, bread of life, we have received from your table more than we could ever ask as you have nourished us in this meal. Now strengthen us to love the world with your own life. In your name we pray, amen. And now the blessing of God who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us be upon you now and forever, amen. We conclude our service with the singing of our ascending hymn, Great is Thy Faithfulness. It's in the blue hymnal, 771.
thank our musicians once again, Amanda, and special thanks to Luke, who is not going to be back with us again next week. Joseph will be back and full of stories of what happened in Mexico, I'm sure. So again, thank you, Luke, for filling in for Joseph. We really appreciated it. And I hope you'll all voice those to Luke before he leaves today. Anyways, until we meet again, may God keep you smiling and keep you healthy and well. And as we say here, now go in peace, for you are the body of Christ.